morning, church. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for helping out. Welcome to East Coast Church, those that are on Facebook Live and that are here in the um, room with me. I appreciate that. Pastor Jerry's not here this morning, as people here can see, and I am Pastor Kim. For those that are on Facebook Live with us, we appreciate it. It's going to be a great day. The Lord has been talking to me the last few weeks about this topic, choices. As I was doing my walks when I was in Oklahoma, he kept telling me choices, choices, choices. Every day you have choices, Kim. Mm. Are you listening to me? Or are you just doing your own thing? Are we doing God's choice or are we doing our own choices? The word choice means an act of selecting or making a decision when faced with two or more possibilities. Have you ever made the wrong decision? <laughs> I know I have. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and every day we have decisions to make. Every day we have decisions to make. Usually every hour we have decisions to make. And are they always the way that God would want our decisions to be made? Are they the answer he wants us to have? Or is it just because we want to make, get the answer quickly and we just make a decision? Sometimes I think we just make decisions because we're in a hurry. And we're not taking time to really listen to God. In Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. If our Lord already has our life planned out, why are we so quick to make decisions? Why don't we go to him? We should be going to him. He's got it planned out. And you know, even before we were born, because we're a later generation, you know, God was giving choices way back when it was time uh -oh. to move on. And there's that lovely choir I had earlier. Okay. But the choice is to ignore him right now, and we're going on with what God wants us to do. But God was having people way back make choices. So it wasn't anything new for us. Nothing new for us. So we have to know that when we go to God, he wants to help us out. He wants to help us out, but we have to be ready to do that. I want to share a story out of the Bible. It's in Genesis 22, starting in verse 1. This is Abraham and Isaac. Abraham had a lot of choices to make. Mm. Had a lot of choices to make. And you know, we have daily choices to make, so it was no different. So when you go into Genesis 28, starting in verse 1, it says, And now it came about after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham? And he said, Here am I. God said, Take. That's going to be the first choice that Abraham has. Take now your son, your only son, whom you love. Take him. He could have said no right then before it went any further. Do sometimes do we make a choice before we even get the next step? Second thing he says, and go to the land of Moriah. He's now saying go. It's going to be a choice. Is Abraham going to listen to God and go? Or is he going to change his mind? He could have changed his mind. The second, third thing he says, and offer him, offer your only son as a burnt offering. I would have stopped right there and said, I don't want this choice. I don't know about you, but I would have stopped right there and said, God, I don't want any more of this plan. I only have one son. I don't want to give him up. So that was take, go, and offer your son. And then I will tell you which mountain to go on. He had choices right off the bat. He could have got out of it right off the top of God talking to him. But he didn't. In verse 3 it says, So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took, so he's taking something, so he's going somewhere, two of his young men with him and Isaac. He is doing another choice. He could have 
said, I'm not going to take my son. I'm going to leave him behind. But it tells us he's taking Isaac, his son. And then he splits the wood for the burnt offering. So he's already making another decision, a different choice. What if he would not have split that wood? The story would have been different. And then he went to the place which God had told him. All of this is choices that could have changed the scenario of this story. So in your life, are things changing because you're making the wrong choice or because you're making the right choice? Your choices determine outcomes. On the third day, Abraham raised his eyes and saw the place from a distance. Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey, and I and the lad will go over there. So it was only Abraham and Isaac going. He could have chosen to take the men with him, too. And then the next part says, and we, we being Abraham and Isaac, Amen. will worship and return. Mm -hmm. Hear this. They're going up to the mountain. In Abraham's mind, he's going to be offering his son for a burnt offering. But he is telling the man, we're going to worship. And we're coming back. Mm -hmm. And we are going to return. Amen. So even though God told him he's going to use his son as a burnt offering, Abraham is believing and trusting God that he's coming back with his son. Right. Abraham took the burnt offering and laid it on his son, laid it on Isaac his son, and he took it in his hand, the fire and the knife. And the two of them walked on together. Isaac spoke to Abraham his father and said, "My father." And Abraham said, "Here I am, my son." He said. Behold, the fire in the wood. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? By now, my stomach would have been churning, knowing that I only had my son for the burnt offering. He could have still backed out. He still could have made a different choice. Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. So Abraham knew God said to bring the son as a burnt offering, but he's believing God's going to change it around. Amen. Do we have that trust in our decisions that God is going to change around what looks impossible? So the two of them walked on together. In verse 9 it says, Then they came to the place of which God had told him, and Abraham built the altar. So that was a choice. He actually built the altar. And he arranged the wood. And he bound his son. Those are all choices. At any point, Abraham could say, I'm out of this deal. He laid his son on the altar at the top of the wood. And then he stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. These are choices. What type of choices do you have every day? Do you have life and death choices like this? Sometimes they seem like life and death when we're going through life. But if we listen to God, he's going to provide the way out. He's going to provide the answers. And as he went to take the knife to his son, the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, here am I, he said. Do not stretch out your hand against the lad and do nothing to him. For I know that you fear God. If we are truly trusting God, and he knows that we fear him, he will be there to give us all the right answers. He doesn't want to give us the wrong answers. He wants us to hear from him, just like Abraham did. But think through that whole story. All the choices could have changed. All the outcomes could have changed. And they came back. So what is it you have today in your life? You need to hear from God. We all need to hear from God. We all need to listen to God. And we need to discern what he's saying. And then actually obey. Mm -hmm. It is so easy to do our own thing. 
It is so easy not to go to prayer. It is so easy not to get time in the Bible because we are so busy. But it makes a difference when it comes to our choices that we make in life. Our choices affect others, too. I was thinking about this the other day, I think way back to when I still lived in California in 1990. Whoever thought I would be out here in New Jersey? Now, some of you know my story. I've heard little bits and pieces of it. But when I think about the day that someone knocked on my front door and said, hey, I'd like to rent the house from you. And I said, I'm not going anywhere. Why would you want to rent my house? And then it was a few, I took their name and their number, so just in case, I took their name and number, and I guess it was a few months later. I don't really remember the time frame now. I decided to move to New Jersey because I had a fiance back here. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, I'll call these people and I'll rent my house. And sure enough, those people who knocked on my door came and rented my house when I decided to come to New Jersey mm -hmm. to be with my fiance, my son and I. Mm -hmm. My son was five years old getting ready to go to kindergarten. So I had to quickly come back here, look for schools. <laughs> and I got back here and that was a choice to come back here. I thought I was coming back here to get married, to be a stay-at-home mom. Mm -hmm. God had different plans. I got back here and I called off my marriage. And here I am in New Jersey, not knowing anybody but my son. Mm -hmm. And I had the choice, do I go back to California, like everyone told me I should have, mm -hmm. or do I stay in New Jersey and start a new life for myself and my son? Mm -hmm. Well, I decided to stay, as you know. and. Mm -hmm. I think about it now, or back then I would think, okay, maybe I'm here because my son is going to meet a wife and have start a family. So when Matthew got married, I said, that's why I moved to New Jersey, so he can meet Sharon. Mm -hmm. That was my justification. My, you know, all the choices I made along the way. And then when he got married, and then when I met Pastor Jerry 12 or 13 years ago, I was dating on a different website. The, the Christian websites. And I had to make choices because I went out with these different people. And believe me, I love to date. It was so fun. <laughs> I was a happy camper. But, you know, I had to make choices. And then I got words from God. I had four different words from God mm -hmm. that he had a husband for me. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, Lord, I don't want to get married. How come you have a husband for me? Mm -hmm. But, you know, it was, I had to listen and I had to discern. I had to make choices. And I remember after probably the first time I got that word, he had a specific husband for me. I had to go back to those websites and I contacted every man I've been dating and said, I can no longer date you because God has a special man for me. It was a choice I made. And these people thought I was nuts. Mm -hmm. They'd come back and say, you're listening to God? And I'm thinking, this is a Christian website. Yes, I'm listening to God. <laughs> yeah. They thought I was crazy. Right. And so, okay, I made my choice. And I waited and waited and waited until I finally got introduced to Pastor Jerry. And then when I met him, I was not interested at all. Oh. That was a choice. And he knows the story. I tell him. You have an hour and ten minutes, and that's all I'm going out with you. I have a test tomorrow. <laughs> I made the choice, and I left after an hour and ten minutes of our date. Oh, well, you know. But God can change things around. <laughs> <laughs> and had I not made the choice and he contacted me later to go back out with him, we wouldn't even have East Coast Church. Mm -hmm. True. I'm being serious. It started back in 1990, mm -hmm. and East Coast Church was not incorporated to two and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. God had a plan, but in those years, I had to make choices, just like each of you had to make choices. Yeah. And we don't know how those choices are going to affect other people. No. Our choices are not just for us. Amen. That is so... That is why it's so important that when we go into prayer, that we listen to God, because his choices are not just for us. The quick answer would be, okay, this is what I'm going to do. But did I stop to think how it's going to affect somebody else? Mm -hmm. We don't usually stop to think about that. This world is getting harder and harder to live in. 
if you haven't noticed. Mm -hmm. Our choices are getting harder. Well, getting harder and harder in some ways, but if you're a Christian and truly live by the word, they're not getting harder. So it depends how you're looking at it. Because of the woke generation, because of the pride month that we just had, because of the politics, because of the things happening in schools, there are so many choices that have to be made right now. And we need to be hearing from God. Because we don't want to come up with the wrong choice. It affects not just us, it affects our families. It makes divisions in friendships. It's been making divisions in families. Mm -hmm. But we need to hear from God. Because when the time finally comes and we're no longer here, our decisions determine where we're going to end up. And us that are Christians, born again Christians, we know we're living with the Lord forever. But a lot of people out there do not realize that yet. So we need to make the choice even to share Jesus with them. Because if not, they're going to hell. We need to make choices of when we're going to share Jesus. And you know when we're doing things outside of church and in here it's all nice and nice. But when we go out, do you know people are watching us? Mm -hmm. So our choices that we make out there, the Christians and non-Christians are watching to see what type of choices we've made. You don't may not think they are, but they are paying attention. So your choices affect other people. Sometimes we have to change our circle of friends or limit our time with them. That recently happened with I and Pastor Jerry. I had someone who'd been friends with a long, long, long time. And their way of living has changed a lot. In not ways that we can partake in or want to partake in. So we have now had to limit our friendship. But still be that godly example to them. And hoping when we made the choice to back away that they're realizing why. Mm. It's a choice we have to make, and sometimes those choices are so hard. Sometimes saying no when people expect us to say yes, especially when it comes to family. Family expects certain things to be done a certain way. And you know, to say no sometimes is so hard. But if you're listening to God, he's going to let you say no when you're supposed to say no. And that's the good news. In 1 Corinthians 10, 23 and 24, it says, All things are lawful. That is morally legitimate, permissible. But not all things are beneficial or advantageous. All things are lawful, but not all things are constructive to character and edifying to spiritual life. Mm -hmm. Let no one seek only his own good, but also that of the other person. That is why we need to do what God wants us to do, because we need to be edifying. We need to be constructive with our character. And when people are watching, that affects them too. So when you make your decisions and our choices, we need to be aware of that. But because of that, God wants us to be blessed. If we're listening to him, he so wants to bless us and bless you. In Deuteronomy 30, it starts out, See, I have set before you today life and goodness. God wants us to have life and be blessed, as well as death and disaster. For I am commanding you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments, his statutes, his ordinances, so that you may live and increase, and the Lord your God may bless you in the land that you're entering. He wants to bless us right here where we live, right where you live. That's why he has set his standards. His, he wants to give you life. He wants to give me life. But if we're not listening, we're not going to be as blessed as we could be. But that's our choice. And other people have the next choice starting in verse 17. But if your heart turns away and you do not listen, but are drawn away to bow down to other gods and worship them, I declare to you today that you will surely perish. You shall not prolong your days in the land, but prolong your days on earth. How many people do you know today that used to be close to God, have backed away 
and they're no longer trying to get that blessed life. They were worshiping other gods and other idols. It could be, I don't know, the football games out there, the TV. It could be uh, not coming to church Sundays. Now, you know, people go on vacations. We've said that before. But some people choose not to go to church ever because they are too busy for God. They are too busy for God. The God who has a blessed life plan for them, they are too busy for. Mm -hmm. So that's a choice we have to make. In verse 19, it says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. He wants us to choose life. He wants us to choose blessings. But the next part says, so that you and your descendants. He's not just saying blessings so you can have a great life. He's talking about your descendants. So if we choose wrong, even our descendants are not going to be blessed. Our choice makes a difference for future generations. And that's important to remember. We want our kids and our grandkids to be blessed, and even the future grandkids. So when we make decisions, we have to think about the future. So that you and your descendants may live, and that you may love the Lord your God and obey him and hold fast to him. For he is your life, and he will prolong your life in the land the Lord has sworn to give you to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And our land is where we live today. This is not just for the past. This is for today. So remember, God wants to bless you. Another example that came up for, that God talked to me about was, what if, this is just what if, Mary decided not to listen to God about having the baby Jesus. That was her choice. She did have a choice. Mm -hmm. In Luke 1, 26 to 28, it says, In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the son Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, and most of us know the story, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Right there, she just said, Okay, hi. Mm -hmm. She, you know, who are you? Whatever. But, you know, she was young, too. She had a whole life ahead of her. She had a whole different life plan ahead of her. Mm. But the angel came to her. In verse 29, it says, Mary was greatly troubled at his words. And what kind of greeting was that? But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. Well, that's good news. She found favor with God. We like that part. Especially being so young. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. Wait, Lord, I am only a young teenager. I am not ready to be a mother. She could have said that. I'm just saying, what if? You know, we who have heard this story for year after year, we just take part of it for granted. And we don't really think what could have been. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever and will never end. And Mary said, How will this be since I am a virgin? And the angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. That could have really scared her. Maybe... The men doesn't understand this, but a woman going through that pregnancy and being so young, that could scare you. Mm -hmm. And she could have said, I'm not ready for this. This is not in my plans. I'm marrying Joseph. Can we wait on this baby thing? Mm -hmm. Just saying, you know, a lot of things could have changed if she would not have agreed to go with the baby. Mm -hmm. In verse 36, it says, Even Elizabeth, our, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she was said to be unable to conceive in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. Mm -hmm. That is so important to hear. This is what God has said. And when you make your choices, and if God is saying it, his word will never fail. Mm -hmm. 
And that's what he told Mary. This is what it is. But God's word will never fail. So when we're making choices, we have to think about that. If God told me and I heard it, and I know it was definitely God, his word will never fail. And it's going to change the course of whatever is happening in our life. Verse 38, I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word be fulfilled. And the angel left her. Mary agreed to have Jesus, as we all know. We all know. Thank goodness Mary agreed to have Jesus. Could you? God gone and got another girl? Probably. But we don't know. Mm -hmm. So if Mary would have said no, where would that have left us today? <laughs> if the choice was she decided not to have Jesus, and if God didn't find another girl that he thought was favorable to have baby Jesus, where would that leave us? Think about it. We'd have maybe have no savior. Where would we be for eternity? Who would we call when we had those struggles? Who would we call when we needed to get our choices? Really be the right choice. When you're going through life, we need God. We need Jesus. And if Mary would have said no, where would that have left us? Just something to think about. God doesn't want us to make the right choices. He wants us to always be right with him. He wants us to walk beside him. He wants us to take his hand and let him guide us. And so often we don't do that. So often we don't do that. We do make wrong choices. But you know, the good news is, even when we mess up, he can get us back on the right path. Amen. As long as we repent and as long as we let him get us back on that right track. Because he's got the plan. In Isaiah 55, starting in verse 8, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Have you ever heard from the Lord and you're thinking, that makes no sense? That makes no sense. Why should I do that, Lord? That is not logical. Not logical for me to want to marry my husband and move to Oklahoma. Let me tell you, that's not logical. I want to be near the beach. <laughs> no. But you know, when the God gives you the plan, I said yes. And I thought I was in Oklahoma for my entire rest of my life. Oh. oh, well. I made a choice. But God knows the end of our plans. Oh, yeah. He knows what's going to happen down the line. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what was going to happen <clears throat> down the line. I remember my daughter-in-law saying to me, Mom, it's only for a season. Mm -hmm. But she didn't know it was only for a season. I never forgot those words. Because her and I were talking after I got engaged. And I thought, okay, it's only for a season. Whatever that means. I still choose to marry Jerry and go to Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. In those 115 degree days. In those 110 degree days. Uh -oh, and and that whole summer that I was there, that first summer, that was over 100 every day. Oh, dear. I don't do that type of weather. <laughs> Without the beach. Neither. But Without the God got me through it because it was my choice to follow God that He had brought me a husband to marry. So I went to Oklahoma in that wonderful weather. And then, you know, God had another plan for me to be with Him because I was kind of from Jersey now. I've been here so many years. And we talk about it, and we know that the plan was that Jerry didn't know the East Coast. He didn't know the way of living. Mm. He didn't know the attitudes back here. <laughs> he didn't know a lot about here. <laughs> and because of that, to put us together, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that helped when we moved back here and were called originally to Stanton Island. But that was the plan. That was a choice we had to make again. So when we look at the choices along the way, some of them just seem almost impossible. But God's thoughts and ways are not our ways. Amen. 
And we have to remember that. In Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 7, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. And that's what we want. We want straight paths. We want the right choices. And he is so good as long as we will listen to him. I want to share a testimony from someone, actually from Tulsa. He posted this about a month ago. And we knew his father. Actually, his father sold our house in Oklahoma. So I know that this testimony is true. And when I saw that, I said, how great is this? You've been talking to me, Lord, about making choices. So I got a hold of Jose, and I said, do you mind if I use your testimony? And he said, no, go ahead. And so when we first, when I first met him, he was married, and I knew he was going separated. And so this is his testimony, and this was way back in 2005-14 when it started. It says, hi, everyone. I felt I needed to share something with you that has been a process of over two years in the making. I share the I share this only to be a point of contact and ex inspiration and encouragement to you. Now it starts out in 2015, but like I said, I knew him before this. And I knew while we were selling our house, his father asked us to pray for him and pray for his marriage. So I knew things were happening. Mm -hmm. In 2015, I went through a very difficult divorce and thought my life would end. In 2017, the Lord restored my life with Chris and gave us two amazing little boys. Mm -hmm. So right there, in a few years, had a bad marriage, got divorced, and then got remarried. Oh. There was a lot of choices in between, mm -hmm. I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. Although every day I miss my three older children, the Lord asked me to put them in his hands and trust him completely to take care of them. That's a big choice because his three kids were living with his ex-wife and he didn't get to see them very much. And that was very difficult for me, he said, extremely difficult. In 2019, I filed for bankruptcy and on the same day, my wife tells me we're pregnant with our second son, Luke. Okay, now we've gone through divorce, we got remarried. You're going into bankruptcy and you're pregnant again and you don't know where the money's coming from. There is a lot of choices that can be made in there. And they may not have been good choices if it was other people. Although every day I miss my older children, the Lord asked me to put them in his hands and trust him completely and take care of them. And that was very difficult, extremely difficult. In 2019, I filed for bankruptcy and on the same day my wife tells me we're pregnant with our second child. In 2020, due to the pandemic, I lost my employment. Mm -hmm. God challenged me to sow my time and talents into people's lives by life coaching, video recording, or anything that needed to add value to their lives. All the while, I would sell things here and there just to make ends meet. We're not talking easy life here. You've got choices to make. God has always been faithful, he says. I had an idea pop into my heart to create funny slogans and sayings on t-shirts. I have no experience. I have no degree on marketing or no degree on graphic designs. I would just draw and write. And then I put it on the back burner. December 2021 hit a very low point, very low. Towards the end of the month, a dear friend of mine of over 20 years called me out of the blue to ask how I was doing. Mm -hmm. That was a choice for his friend. Mm -hmm. He heard God say, call Jose, mm -hmm. and he did it. How many times do we get choices mm -hmm. we're told to call somebody or text somebody and we don't do it? Mm -hmm. Jose was at a very low point. He needed that phone call. I thought this was just another one of those calls that people make just to appease their own hearts. Little did I know it was God's lifeline sent to rescue me. Jonathan Connolly, thank you for making that phone call. This friend blessed me in more ways than I could ever thank him for encouragement, wisdom, and just his presence checking in on me. One day I shared this idea that was on the back burner with him as a joke, and I showed him some of my designs. He said, this is definitely a God idea. 
and I needed to do something about it. I just laughed it off until I learned that former President Donald Trump loved one of my designs. Okay, we had choices to make. How did it get to President Donald Trump? And who would ever thought? Well, Coach JC encouraged me and guided me through the entire process of making Freedom Wear a reality today. Mm -hmm. Freedom Wear was birthed today. I am the least person to want to put out designs and to make some statements knowing not everyone is going to be pleased with me, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Not everyone is going to like them, and I get it. But I am not here to have people like or be pleasing to them. Because we are living in a time where society is pushing their woke agenda down our throats, I wanted to do something about it and tell our children that it is not okay to be a certain way and to live a certain way. Let me be clear in one issue. I don't hate people. Let's be clear. Be clear. I love everyone. Whether you are lesbian, trans, other religions, the love of Christ always wins. However, the lifestyles and choices others are making is what my designs and apparel are addressing. Jesus Christ came to seek and save the lost. He loves everyone. I follow the same example he left us. But you better believe I will stand up for his way of living. Otherwise, I will fall for anything. He not only went from being down and out to a whole new life with a whole new family, a whole new business that is doing amazingly well. But all the choices in between, he could have stopped at any one time. He could have said no at any one time to any of the contacts that came his way. But he knew God was talking to him. And when he made the decision to go forward, Accept that call from his friend, Jonathan, mm. even. That's a start. Pick up the phone call. When you're so down and out, sometimes you don't even want to talk to anybody. But that one call changed his life. Mm -hmm. So what is it in your life today that needs to be changed? It might be one prayer away, one call away, one text message away, one meeting with some acquaintance, people you don't even know. Jose did not know Doc, or President Donald Trump personally, yet he's the one that liked his designs and that's what encouraged him to go forward with the business. That is a big change. So God has the perfect plan for you, but we need to make the right choices. So let me encourage you today to go to God. Ask him to help you with the choices. Don't make those choices so quickly. And just know that he wants to have you to have a blessed life, the life that he has planned for you. Those that are watching my Facebook, thanks for listening in. Have a great day, and we'll see you next week. And he doesn't even know how to get me off. <laughs> yeah. I still might be on Facebook, but that's okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs>